Hello. Exploring oneness and the nuance and the conversations around that. And I want to speak to a comment from Michelle. And she's explained here. What did I? I asked her to explain. Was it Christ consciousness or something like that? A spiritual terminology. And I was like, oh, I'm not quite sure what that is. Can you explain what that is? And she's put here. Um, there's a false sense of self and a true sense of self. Our soul is always in oneness and union with God. And that is, and our soul is in union with God and all that is, whereas our ego self thinks it's separate and fearful of its own demise. I don't know whether to read on because the comment is a little bit longer. But I just want to unpack that for a moment because I read it and I'm like, yes, but the way that the wording, like, our, I don't know whether it's our English language or the, the wording that we're used to using, it's almost like it implies using the word false sense of self implies that it's false, it's wrong or that's not that's not the and then true self implies that is where we want to be so what I want to unpack is why certain spiritual terminology it's almost like it gives the wrong impression to me it gives an ineffective impression saying that's a false self and that is a true self it gives the impression that the false self is like, that's not where you want to be. And the true self is where you want to get to. So going back to one of my other videos where I speak about in, in spiritual circles, there's this place to get to. There's a point to get to. There's a goal. There's like, I need to achieve oneness or I want to live from my soul. And there's a, there's a, there's a place to be. There's a goal. Whereas for me... Heart's wisdom is about using terminology that takes the goal off of the table because in, in, my, in my perception of the way I perceive things, yes, there's an egoic self and yes, there's a, a part of us that's in oneness and connected to all that is that is connected to wisdom, that is connected to the archaic records, that's connected to uh, collective consciousness, whatever term you want to use, there's a part of us that's connected to the allness because we're made up of the same stuff. So there's a part of us that's love and we would call that the soul part that's, that's always in love and connected to all other beings there is a connection it's like the trees all connected through their roots underground but they look separate but they're actually a community okay so I'm like yes there is that this part of us that's continuously connected and there's a part of us that is perceived as separate the ego self as it's termed in spiritual terms so that we can know ourselves as this love frequency. We need a part that's counter to that so that we can actually have an experience. Because if we are just this, there is no experience. If we're just love, we can't know ourselves as love. We need the opposite to learn from. So instead of the egoic state to me being a false sense of self, this is the the counter in which I learn. So it's a necessary part of my being so that I can learn more about love. I need my ego self. I need it as a teacher. I need it as a navigator. I need, this is my awareness. I'm love, but to know myself as all of the parts and facets of this, I need an awareness tool, which is my ego self. 
Not that it's bad or wrong or false or the bit causing me pain or the bit to get away from. It's like, this is my tool that I use to know myself as love. So for me, it's like everything that's written in that statement is like, yes, there's a soul part and there's a counterpart in which we learn. But the terminology in which it's used to explain, I'm a little bit like, mm, I don't resonate with the terminology that there's a false self and a true self. And then it goes on to say the ego self thinks it's separate and it's fearful of its own demise. The egoic self suffers and leads to unhappiness and even depression, whereas our true soul self is always happy and joyful and in love. And the words used is like, this is the nasty, unhappy place to be. And the soul is like, yeah, that's the heaven and that's the place to get to. So it's funny because I'm in total agreement of this, that that is so, but I'm just in resistance to the terminology and the way that it's explained for me gives the wrong impression of the whole dance of life, the whole point of heart's intelligence, the whole point of wisdom, the whole point of love learning from itself is that it needs the counter. It needs this state. So I'm not trying to get to just being pure love because that's not the human experience to me. That's what happens when I die. I transcend and I'm all loving again. The part of me that's chosen to have a human experience has chosen to become a three-part being. The part of me that's still connected to source and love and that's what happens also when I transcend. And the part of me that's chosen to, to inhabit this physical body have a perceived separation experience and have a, <clears throat> let's call it egoic consciousness mind, a mind ego consciousness to teach me and I'm a three-part being. So it's the part of spirituality that, that says it's like going back to death or that we've come here to have a body, to have an ego mind but that these tools we need to somehow reject or get away from and we just need to be this oneness, pure love state. I'm in disagreement to that because my truth is that I've chosen a human experience. I've chosen a somatic experience to really truly feel my body and I've chosen to have a mind as a teacher to help me navigate all of my parts. And I can't know my full loving self if I'm not in my truth. And using my ego mind helps me to navigate my truth and using my body as another tool helps me navigate the truth. So oneness in my human experience is integrating my ego with my body, with my soul. It's not checked out just having a soul aligned experience and I'm disregarding or getting away from this bad wrong ego thing or not listening to my body. That's to me is not oneness, that's to me is checking out and looking for death, looking to transcend, looking to die again, right? Because integrating body and mind are too difficult for that being so that they want to essentially transcend which is leave the body behind leave the ego mind behind and die become pure energy again so for me that's checking out that's saying i find this way too difficult bye so some people you know, each to their own. If you want to do a transcendent state, great. But for me, the word, the term oneness is not just the soul state because that would be an aspect of my being. To me, oneness is integrating soul, 
my ego mind and my physical body and integrating as a three-part being to know myself fully as those three things. That is oneness. Holding duality. Holding the awareness of all of it is being okay with what is. Does that make sense? To me, that's what oneness is. Whereas in I feel in some spiritual circles, oneness is used as a, as a transcendent term for just the soul experience. And that is somewhere to get to. And that is, you know, being better than the ego and have transcended it. And I just think that's, that, that terminology gives the wrong impression. Because to me, transcendence would mean integration. It would mean I haven't gotten rid of a part of me. I have accepted, fully accepted a part of me. And I'm therefore so okay with what is. Because to fully be okay with what is, it, it takes integration. Does that make sense? Because you, I would say, if, if one has transcended, right? Not, let's not use the words transcended, but, but like just living from a soul state and they've turned their back on the ego part and said, that's not me, that's nothing to do with me. It would be impossible to be okay with what is. Because just turning your back on that part and saying that's not me is separation, divide, that's wrong, I'm right. Does that make sense? So it's like using really careful terminology to describe a really difficult thing. Because the very act of getting away from the ego that it's, it's not okay and we need to just be soul is cannot, you cannot be accepting of all that is because you're not accepting of the ego part or you wouldn't be accepting of somebody else's ego part. If somebody was in resistance and really struggling with their ego, you'd go, oh, just let that go, you know, let that feeling go. It's bad, it's wrong. Don't, don't behave like that. You need to be mm, oneness, mm, loving. It's that piece is not being okay with what is. It's saying you have to mould into my version of just love. So I feel that when I like to be very careful in spiritual circles because I, do, I don't want to be moulded into a version of what somebody thinks is just love and I need to behave like them and just be loving, be nice to all things so that it's, it's I'm behaving, I'm fitting into a mould, I'm ticking their boxes and yes, well done, you're being all loving. You can't have your own truth over here in your ego. You have to be like this and just send love and be all nice and we all behave nicely. To me, that's not accepting of what is the only true way to be in full acceptance of what is is if the ego is integrated because then it genuinely can be like yeah I'm okay holding your pain I'm okay if you have a reaction to this if your ego is freaking out I'll be like okay that's okay let's see let's look come here come in and everyone then is allowed their own truth in this mix rather than you have to fit into the love mold. It's like we're all one is every piece of the puzzle is allowed to be their unique multifaceted self rather than molded into we're just souls over here. We're just loving. Does that make sense? So to me, heart intelligence and oneness, oneness can only be achieved if things are integrated. The ego is not pushed away, it is integrated. Is it, is it, a, it is a tool to know your truth. And transcendence cannot be achieved 
unless ego is integrated. And saying, yeah, I know my ego self very well. And I use it as a navigating tool of surrender and acceptance to all that is. Not as a part to be like, oh, that's base and I'm better than it. Because that very act is not oneness. Because oneness would mean ego mind, soul, body. All of those things are accepted and integrated because that's the whole. Oneness is an acceptance of everything. The ego mind, all the shadows, all the parts that we're not aware of, an exploration of that. Does that make sense? I don't know whether to read the, the, the last bit of her comment, but it's really interesting, just the terminology, because I agree with the things in her comment, but it's like, using very careful words to describe this difficult thing because we can all say the word oneness and say the word transcendence and it's like hold on a moment what what does that actually mean let's unpack does oneness mean an integration of these three parts or does oneness mean that you just want to be your soul and you don't want to be ego or body does that make sense and this is, so the comment goes, most people live in their egoic, fearful, separate self, which cannot truly love, though to try to love leads us back to our soul. The point is to work towards oneness. But my argument would be, you can't have oneness if you leave this fearful, separate self, separate it has to be integrated. So learning from the fearful egoic state. And it's like saying most people live in their fearful egoic state. And it's like, yeah, that's what the human experience would be. But do mo most people live there? But do most people learn from it? So for me, living there might not be effective trying to get away from it and transcend it and be just a soul and all loving and mm, would not be effective. But to do neither of those things and do a third thing, a heart intelligence thing of learning from the ego fearful state. When do you close? When are you in fear? Can you track your body? Do you know when you've closed? Learning from it, integrating it is the only true way to get to oneness. Because separating from it cannot be oneness. Does that make sense? To me, it just doesn't make sense to separate from something and then call that oneness. It's like, what? It would, ha it would have to be three part beings that integrated. This fearful part is so essential to learn from. Not to be blinded by, not to be even more separated by, but to learn from, embrace, love, nurture, yes. The point is to work towards oneness. So again, just describing that there's a point to get to and to oneness is like uh, false spiritual terminology that it's like you need to get over here. You need to fit in our mold. You need to be all loving. And I'm going, no, 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 hold on a moment. I want to, to be where I'm at, be comfortable where I'm at, integrate so I'm genuinely a whole being. Does that make sense? <sighs> Lack of separation until one day we realise ourselves as pure unconditional love, joy, this is what it means to be self-realized. Hmm. The lack of separation. So for me, it will be, uh, I've had states, um, altered consciousness states, where it literally is a part of my consciousness is back in total oneness. Yes, I get that that is a transcendent state. I cannot live my life in that state it's impossible 
I can have moments there so that I can understand it and integrate that with my ego, with my body, and become a being self-realized in oneness. But I can only do that if I'm integrated with my ego and my body. And I'm a three-part being. If I wanted to stay in that transcendent state, just energy, I would call that death. Leaving my physical body then uh, or, and detaching from the ego mind, to me that's death. Right? Even though I still believe I'm a three-part being in death. Still have an energy body. I still have three parts even in death. But to stay in that trans, um, transcendental state would be dying. That would be fully transcending, fully transcending over. So to be in my, to be in oneness in my physical human experience, it just takes integration. There's nowhere to get to, but I need to integrate my three part beings. And being in unconditional love and joy is just being in my heart's truth, being in my ego truth, using my ego to track and give me more awareness, not pretending that it's wrong, moving away from it. Oh, that's really, you know, it doesn't have a voice. My, my egoic self very much does have a voice. I'm just aware of its voice so that I can learn from it. Does that make sense as like... Uh, unpacking all of these little parts and all of the differences. I feel language is such a, a funny tool and unpacking these words and meanings is sort of like we use the same term oneness but it's I'm just wanting to be really clear with with clarity. What does that word mean? What assumptions, what connotations, what have we learned that that word means? What does it really mean? Does it mean we need to get somewhere? Does it mean this? Or is it taken as, oh yeah, oneness obviously just means means integration. It means I'm a three-part being and I learn from all of my parts. And that would, to me, would be self-realization because I have realized I'm a three-part being. I've realized learning from my soul, from my ego, loving it, integrating it. Then I am whole and I can live day to day to day like that because it's integrated. I can't live day to day in, in, a, in an experience that, you know, psychedelics can take me to or transcendental meditation can take me to. I can use that to integrate it into my daily life. But if I was going to spend 24-7 in that transcendented state, that would be death to me. That's what dying is. And that would be checked out and that would be, I've, I've had the experience and I, I, want to, I want, just want to stay there because it's too difficult for me to integrate my ego and my body because I don't know how to do that. But to me integrating these experiences with ego self with body with somatics that is oneness because it's the whole package it's the three parts all learning together that's then unity and i suppose that would be the the divine dichotomy finding the unity in the three part beingness because yes that transcendental state is usually from a soul experience. So I get that the assumption is, oh, there's a, there's a place that we just need to get to and stay in more of the time. I get that that's the assumption, but I don't think that's very effective. That's not how I love my daughter. That's not how I am in connection with other beings. That's not how I deepen my knowledge of my, my own truth. That is just a state and I can learn from that state but if I'm not integrating it in true oneness it's useless it's just a death state it's the integration that is more difficult but more useful 
and then I can truly be okay with what is on a day-to-day -day basis. I can truly meet my own fears. I can truly meet my own difficulties in life. I can truly be of service to others when they're struggling. I can truly be of service to my daughter as she grows up because I have integrated joy in day-to-day -day life. I am happy with what is on a day-to-day -day basis. Bring joy to each emotion. Be in my truth. Does, does this make sense? Is this landing? And I love the comments and I love the juiciness and going into it. And if anyone, if this sparks something in you, please leave a comment and say, oh, yeah, this is, this is what comes alive in me as, as we are unpacking this and talking about it. Please do leave a comment. What words have you, do you use to describe this? How do you see it? And I would, I would love to hear your comments and to see um, how the story unravels. I know this is a long video, but there's lots to unpack here. So thank you for staying with me. Mwah. Hope you chai. <laughs>